we are all connected, connected by little bits of DNA passed down from our ancestors. Where did we come from and how did the Earth's population patterns come to be? The National Geographic Society and IBM are trying to find out through the Genographic Project. And joining us now to tell us about the project's promise in Washington, D.C. via Skype, Spencer Wells. He's director of the Genographic Project and explorer in residence with National Geographic. And Dr. Wells, great to have you on TVO. How are you? Great to be here, Steve. I'm fine. Well, uh, I'm going to do this at some point, but before I do, let's find out more about it. What is the Genographic Project exactly? Well, you know, it's, it's really a concerted scientific effort to make sense of a basic human question, a philosophical question. Where do we all come from? Um, we look around the world, we travel, see people who seem to be so different from each other, uh, from ourselves perhaps. How did those patterns of diversity arise? We're really trying to answer that basic question. Are we all connected to each other? Are we all related? And how do we populate the planet? And how does taking a swab from the inside of the mouths of as many people as you can help you answer that question? <laughs> that's, a, yeah, that's a very good question. Perhaps not the, the most obvious way to go about answering the question. But what we study are genetic markers. We study DNA, um, your blueprint to make another version of you. And as DNA is copied and passed down through the generations, so you got your DNA from your parents and they got it from their parents and so on, it traces a line of descent. We study tiny little changes that occur from time to time as the DNA is being copied and passed down through these generations. Um, they're called mutations, and they occur at a very low but a measurable rate. And when these changes in the DNA sequence get passed down through the generations, they again trace an unbroken lineage down through, the, through time. And so by looking at your particular pattern of genetic markers, particular regions in the genome that we know vary between individuals, we can actually start to place you onto a family tree of humanity. And in fact, everybody in the world falls onto a branch of this family tree. And that branch tells the story of how you migrated around the planet. Hmm. Okay, we're showing the kit now. You want to bring this up on camera three? Here's the kit. Geno right. 2.0. Geno 2.0 kit. So this came out uh, in the latter half of, of last year. Um, the project has been going on since 2005. And this is a completely new version of the testing kit. So right. again, and okay. offering the opportunity for people to test themselves since 2005. This is, uh, there's a completely new technology underpinning this, a brand new chip that we designed, if you will, that scans your entire genome, looking at nearly 150,000 positions, these markers that I was talking about, and allowing us to place you onto the branches of this family tree with unprecedented detail. Okay, I am going to, take me through this if you would, because I'm going to snap the, um, whatever you call this, the Q-tip like thing open. Okay, so you want to be careful not to touch the uh, Q-tip part with your fingers. Very good, I have not done that. Yeah, this is, it's sterile. So and what you're going to do is you're going to use that to scrape a few cells off the inside of your cheek. Okay, uh, now there's so two of them in here, Dr. Wells. Do I need part. both of them? Sorry? There's two of them in here. Do I need to do this twice? Yeah, so you're going to do one on one cheek and one on the other cheek. Gotcha. So you're going to take that scraper and put it inside your mouth, scrape it up and down. Okay, you're really going to do that. <laughs> 20,000 interviews, I've never done this before. Okay, here we go. All right, inside, scraping up and down. Yep, so the, the rough end of the scraper. And what you're doing is you're scraping a few cells off the inside of your mouth. Do it for okay. about 20 seconds. Oh, 20 seconds. Okay. Yep. And right. so we want to make sure that we're getting enough of those cells off the inside of your mouth. You're not drawing blood or anything, hopefully. It's literally just taking some of the cells off the surface. Mm -hmm. And each one of those cells has your entire genome. And so this is how we get your DNA so that we can go in and analyze those genetic markers. Now, how do I know this is not going to end up in a police lab and embarrass me someday? <laughs> <laughs> well, the database is uh, anonymous and it's, it's you know, completely protected. Now, you want to be careful. Wait a minute. Oh, so, yeah. Sorry. Don't do that yet. OK. You should have gone through this a little bit before you started. What you're going to do is you're going to take that, and there's a vial in the kit as well. A vial there's as well. Some vials in there. Oh, yeah. I see that. OK. Yep. Put that okay. In so, what, yeah. What you're going to do is pull those vials out. OK. <laughs> All um, right. This is entertaining. OK. You're going <laughs> to unscrew the top. Right. And now you're going to take the tip of the, the swab. Yes. Push it down inside the vial. Inside the vial. And there is a plunger, so if you see that smaller little uh, thing at the end, push that. That thing here? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Smaller tube. Push the plunger. And the tip should slide off into the vial. Oh, yes, it has. All right. Excellent. Okay, so now you can throw away 
the uh, plastic tube and just put the top back on. Put the top Set on. Side. You can put that into the plastic bag, in fact. And this goes into the plastic bag, yep. okay. And then swab the other cheek with the other uh, okay. swab. Second swab. Don't touch. And I did left cheek, so this time it's right cheek. Right cheek, All yep. right, 20 seconds. And how different, I, I may... Uh, the two cheeks should be the same, if that's what you're about to ask. No, I was going to ask, how, how different do you think my DNA, I, I'm a, uh, like, Russian, Polish, uh, North American-born uh, male. Uh, f how different is that DNA going to look from somebody who, for example, would be uh, South African black female? Um, well, so both men and women have a piece of DNA known as mitochondrial DNA that's mm -hmm. passed down a purely maternal line. Uh, only women pass it on. And so you're both going to have particular genetic markers on the mtDNA. Everybody ultimately traces their origins back to Africa within the last 60,000 years or so. So you're going to share certain genetic characteristics with people from Africa. But as your ancestors, you just told me that you came from Eastern Europe, um, migrated out of Africa over the last 60,000 years and into Europe, they picked up additional genetic markers, whereas the Africans picked up different genetic markers. So there are going to be some similarities and some differences. Um, you also have a Y chromosome. This is the piece of DNA that makes men men, so women are not going to be carrying that. That's another distinguishing feature if you were swabbing a South African woman. Uh, there are other genetic patterns as well determined by the, the sets of genetic markers. So there are going to be some differences, but the overall story that comes out of this and what you'll see when you get your results back on the website is that everybody, as I said, ultimately traces back to this Africa, African origin. The, the root of the human family tree lies in Africa. And so you are much more closely related than perhaps you might have suspected to that South African woman. Hmm. Now, here's a question I didn't anticipate having to ask. But these kits seem fairly idiot-proof. But apparently <laughs> this idiot has managed to bend the end of the plunger. And I oh, can't no. get okay, the... Well, try and straighten it out and, and push... Push the plunger down if you can. <laughs> this is hilarious. Okay. No, I did a great job. I've bent it, and I cannot get the plunger to go through this, this thing in order to deploy the end that I've just given you the sample on into the... Okay. Now, I wonder See if I... you can scrape off the tip somehow. Maybe on the side of that uh, vial. Hmm. If I twist it, is that going to work? Oh, maybe I'm getting some progress here. This, I'm sure, is spectacular television. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time this has actually happened. I'm, I'm delighted to be your first truly <laughs> supremely idiotic host who hasn't been able to figure out how to do this. Now, as you've been collecting all the different samples, um, how many have you got so far? Um, so we are up over 500,000 public participants. Um, and we also, of course, have a team of researchers around the world. This is a, a research project at its core um, who've been working with indigenous and traditional communities. And that is because these are the people who retain that link to their geography that so many of the rest of us have, have lost. So you mentioned that you have ancestors from different places in Europe. You live in North America. Um, it's difficult to say exactly what your DNA is going to tell us about ancient migration patterns because there's been so much recent migration. But there are these people, the world's indigenous and traditional groups, who've stayed in the same place for a long period of time, hmm. hundreds, thousands, even tens of thousands of years, perhaps. And they give us an insight into their ancestors' genetic patterns. And so this is the work that's been going on with our scientific team, and we're up over 70,000 samples or so on that front. So we're, up, we're getting close to 600,000 people in the project so far. Okay. Have you found that there are some cultures that object to this kind of testing because... Uh, what you find out may actually contradict some of the founding myths of their culture, and that's something they perhaps don't want to have come to light. Well, most of the, the groups that we've approached have been very positive about the project, and they're fascinated by this notion that you know, they may know their ancestry going back through seven, ten generations, perhaps. They can name people, and we can go back beyond what they know about their ancestry. They're carrying a piece of those people inside of them, they believe, and in fact, they are in their DNA. And so the they kind of light the go, it goes off, and they get very, very excited about participating. In some cases, though, as you say, there are groups that um, you know, are perhaps a little bit concerned about possible conflicts with stories and so on. Uh, you know, given the history of colonial exploitation in certain parts of the globe, in the Americas, um, Australia, and so on, uh, it's been a little more challenging there. But we have managed to, to sample all over the world on every continent. 
And um, you know, people who join the project, again, are very, very excited about finding out more about their ancestry. We really see this as adding to what they already know in terms of the traditional stories and certainly not trying to replace anything. It's, it's adding to their knowledge of who they are and how they got to where they live today. No, I understand, but if some groups decide, for the reasons we've just discussed, that they don't want to participate, does that affect the accuracy of your overall sampling? Um, yeah, I mean, certainly if there are large gaps in the sampling, then we're not able to say as much about certain regions of the world. That, that would be an automatic outcome. But in general, we do have enough samples to tell these overall stories of human migration. Okay. Are there any stories from what you've been able to gather so far that stand out for you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the thing that, that really strikes me as so amazing as a scientist is how recently we all came out of Africa. And that has just been confirmed by every single sample we look at. The idea that in only 2,000 human generations, we've generated all the diversity we see around the world today. 6,000 different languages and skin colors and hair types and so on. So that's really, again, the big message that comes out of all the work we do. But there are you know, little local regional stories as well. The genetic impact of the Crusades in the Middle East, um, crusaders from Europe carrying genetic lineages on the male side um, into the Christian populations of, say, Lebanon today. So we can see evidence of these things, the spread of the Phoenician Empire around the Mediterranean and so on. So it's, it's really, you know, looking back to the very beginnings of our species and the initial migrations from Africa, all the way up into what we might think of as recorded history. Well, Dr. Wells, the good news is that while I'm a complete idiot when it comes to these kinds of kits, I'm surrounded by a crack technical crew. Someone, <laughs> I'm sure, will be able to figure out how to deploy the sample that I've provided into the tube so that I can patch all this together and mail it off to you guys. It's actually very simple. I'm just not good at this stuff. <laughs> but uh, thank you for bringing this all to our attention, and we'll do our best to get this sample to you in, in prime mint condition. Excellent. Thanks a lot. Dr. Spencer Wells out of Washington, D.C., the Explorer in Residence. For the National Geographic Society, he's leading this genographic project. Thanks again, Dr. Wells. Thank you. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.